Hello my soccer universe for a long overdue Serie A review video. Yes, I just didn't get to it and wouldn't you know it, I actually was in Italy without watching any games, which is a little bit um, downer. But you know, I was in Venice and I didn't realize that Venezia were playing, but it was a family vacation. So yeah, three rounds that I want to go through. Uh, I will hit some highlights of these rounds, but first a little bit an overarching theme. Going into the international break, Milan were suddenly top of the table. Well, they're not anymore. Milan were really, really bad. They were so bad, in fact, that you don't see them on the backside uh, here in on the background because not only did they lose to Juve, the team that they're wearing, they also lost at home to Udinese, which was one of the worst performances that I have seen from them this season. Yes, they had a very good first half against Napoli, but then again, um, after 2-0 up, only 2-2. It's not what Milan would exp uh, what you would expect from Milan, and it's definitely worry at the moment. I am not on the Pioli out front because I don't see really the um, uh, alternatives. Let 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 it But he, he needs to get his you know what a little bit together. But that leads us very nicely to Juve. I think of all the teams that are currently in the top four in all of the top leagues, Juventus has to be the most boring one to watch. It's even to the point where Juve is really right up there on the table. And yes, no European commitments makes it easier for them. Uh, and they're keeping up for now with Inter, although there is no head-to-head -head so far. But you cannot watch them. They are absolutely atrocious to watch. I did myself this torture uh, twice already this season and I regretted it every single time. This team, you cannot watch. It's a leg ball. It is effective. They get the goals. They keep on uh, going, they keep on winning, and yes, it's also due to the fact that the squad is probably not up to snuff, and he tries to maximize it with a defensive tactic, which, all fine, <laughs> it's not for me. I want to watch something more exciting, and yes, Milan was also dreadful to watch this uh, weekend, so uh, I, I know I'm shooting from a very uh, weird angle here. Having said that, I still think the league is all about Inter. It's all about Inter. They uh, they just get it done every single thing. I mean, at times they really look impressive. Celanoglu now becoming one of the best midfielders in the league. It, that means probably also within Europe, which hurts a little bit. Lautaro Martinez getting it regularly done. And then, of course, uh, they have with uh, Thuram also a really, really good player up front. The Roman teams... Don't get it. Uh, don't get going. Really, uh, one disappointment after another, and even when they win, it is anything but convincing. Which is actually a way that allows Napoli to very well and Milan to very well stay in this top four race. I mean, for Milan, you still have kind of the idea maybe if they get everything fit again and maybe they can adjust. Potentially, they could shoot for the title. I see this is now as a very very outside shot um, for Napoli, even more so. Um, and I'm not sure if it's the coach hole holding back or just something not quite right. Um, I also need to mention Fiorentina, who were poised for a top four finish, really opening the door. And unlike Atalanta, they have been falling away, losing out of nowhere to Empoli, uh, lose, losing to Juve uh, now. But Fiorentina is definitely on a tailspin as well. And last but not least, <laughs> how about Cagliari? Uh, beating their fellow promoted teams and both of them are comeback wins and won um, a really really amazing one to boot as well and I would say let's hit round nine this was right after the international break uh, Napoli get the job done at Ellas uh, was I think Quaratskelia uh, really showed up for that one then Inter were struggling against Torino, but scored late goals, uh, getting another win. And this is typically Inter get, get, getting a job done. Same thing goes for Lazio. Roma stumble to a, a win against Monza. Uh, we had uh, Salentana and Cagliari. It's a big one in the relegation battle. A 2-2 draw. Atalanta staying up there with 2-0. And then Milan against Juve. A game uh, that hinged actually on a red card for um, uh, Ciao which unfortunately was a red card. Uh, Milan had the better of the first four. For the means created one really good chance uh, with Juve actually just hanging in there. But you have to say Milan did not create that many great chances either. 
Then the red card is 10 men less and even we are uh, not 10 men, one man less. So uh, it's 10 again, it gets 11. At this point, I'm thinking, yeah, you have to reshuffle defense. I wouldn't have taken off Pulisic. I would have taken off Shiru because you need the mobility. And this is what I don't get with Pioli, some of his some decisions. I love me Giru, but at the moment, uh, if he, I, I really think that um, I would have gone for speed right there instead of having a static strike and then bring on Jovic Lele, they don't, didn't really change much. So uh, that's a bad on the, on the coach, in my opinion. But even so, Milan were not the worst team and they lose it on a deflected shot by Locatelli, who scores on the same day as he scored against Juve. In the same stadium, it was just a different goal uh, in almost the same minute. It was just one of those freaky things. And then I already said Fiorentina losing at home to Empoli. An Empoli team that everyone said they are going to go down for sure. They are so bad. And then they win the derby against uh, Fiorentina. Did not look good. On the past weekend... Um, we can talk all about the early, early game when you were winning against Elas Verona again late, late and Allegri ball. Brr, boring, boring. Uh, Torino also winning. Uh, and then there was the uh, uh, like sort of story between Sassuolo and Bologna in, in ending a 1 1. But the one that we really have to talk about, Frozen on had a 3 0 lead at Cagliari in the 70th minute and they managed to lose it. I mean, it's now Bill this Claudio Ranieri working again his magic, but that's an epic. Epic comeback that never has happened in Serie A before. And that actually gave a little bit, uh, Kakali, a little bit of shot in the arm. Inter uh, beat Roma with a late goal, but honestly, Roma just decided to park the bus and see you later and maybe can get out with a nil-nil draw. And it was all about Lukaku returning to Inter, you know, with whistles being prepared and all that kind of stuff. He was a non-factor in that game. Yeah, it's Turam who gets the winner. Inter again, get the job done. You need to do more Mourinho, to be honest, unless you actually want to help Inter uh, win that title. But this was one rather disappointing match. However, Napoli-Milan, and actually this was on the day before we left it, Italy. I actually decided to not watch it. Yeah, this was a big mistake on my part because this was probably one of the best games in Serie A this season. Um... With Milan ta super efficient, taking a uh, 2-0 lead at the half uh, through Giroud, both goals, he finally gets back on scoring sheet and now not on, on, on the penalties. Uh, there could have been more goals. I mean, Napoli had a bit, maybe more of the game, but Milan were super efficient, as they usually are against Napoli. Uh, uh, really nice Politano goal, and then the first free kick... Um, for uh, Na Napoli in a long time through uh, Rasburo had the level the score or in the 60th minute and then you thought that Napoli is pushing for for the win but that also allowed Milan to open chances it was up and down affair one of the most ent entertaining games this season but it also confirmed that none of these teams are solid enough at least at this very moment to mount a serious title challenge and that's not good Atalanta stay in the top four race and probably they are the one team, not the Roman teams. I think they are they are the one one team that either could challenge Na Napoli Milan for a top four spot uh, at this uh, point and then uh, Lazio winning it one 0 I think it was another late goal against Fiorentina. Fiorentina second loss in a row, and it became three. But we'll talk about that. We also have to give loads of credit to Bologna. Uh, yes, there were now a couple of draws, but they have not lost since the first day of the season when they lost at home to Milan. Uh, now they beat Lazio 1-0 at home. Ferguson uh, being on the verge of being record Scottish goal scorer in Serie A. Napoli, local derby against Salentano. Weird jersey match of Salentano playing in the third jersey against Napoli in the black one, which looks different from the front and on the back, but Napoli get it done. Again, uh, staying in the top four. Uh, it was like all the Champions League teams were playing early. So, you know, it continued. Inter, really impressive. Not liking still the orange jer jersey, but really impressive at Atalanta. I said Lautaro, especially Charles Cianoglu, hitting it on a different level. 2-1 uh, against a really good Atalanta side. And that's usually an indicator. If someone wins at Atalanta, that means good things. And so, we had all the Champions League teams winning. Of course, Milan is going to win against Udinese. No, they are not. No, they are not. It was atrocious what Milan was showing. Nothing. I mean, yes. Uh, Udinese didn't show much either. And Milan did at least create early on a few chances. 
but it got worse and worse and it was well what's even worse is that uh yes you had a few uh in, in injuries you had to reshuffle uh teo cool 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 cool, cool play uh, so that doesn't help, but what also doesn't help is that you then make a 4 4 2 and you have Jovic and Giroud up front. I mean, at least give me some speed. Uh, I've said, I've, I've said, said before the goal, then I mean, it was. I've seen this game with Milan over the years, uh, even in the now successful or more successful PRP period where Milan. Actually, uh, they have a little bit more of a game, they are really bad up front. Uh, in goal and then the opponent just has one attack and gets a goal and yes it was a penalty I was hoping because the Adli touched the ball a little bit uh, that it will be taken back no it was not it is converted it's one little Udine and allow again doing nothing or trying to win it by himself it didn't happen it just didn't it didn't, it didn't happen uh, Cagliari get another home win against another fellow promoter side with one nil down against Genoa again comeback win Cagliari actually probably getting a little bit enough going to mount a challenge to stay in the league although many said they might not uh, Lecce uh, held out against Roma for a long 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 time I mean Lukaku missed early penalty then Lecce take lay, uh, in the second half the one nil lead and it seemed like they can hold on I mean they parked the bus, kept Roma at bay. It all seemed to be fine until stoppage time. Masada as Moon heads one in. And then uh, Lukaku does Lukaku things, just uh, turns on a uh, ledger defender and puts, puts in the net and wins it late on. Glorious celebrations. I just have to say uh, of what Lukaku pulled uh over the last few years i just cannot warm up to him any anymore and this was a player that i actually even though he was playing for inter i actually liked his ed 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 attitude and you know his personality but you know these turns left and right doesn't seem so i, I actually although i really like roma was not so happy about that one in, in particular Miretti scores the winner for Juve, but I think this was a game that many people said should not have been played because of the floodings in Tuscany and the Ultras actually were helping in the relief efforts. It was also, if you held this game, you're taking away policing manpower that is needed for uh, the disaster relief. Uh, the game went ahead regardless, however the Ultras stayed away from it. So uh, Fiorentina against Juve, you have to understand, is one of the biggest games for Fiorentina the entire season. The ultras stayed away from it because they had more important things to do and as many bad things you can say about the ultras with uh you know uh, not um uh staying away from violence and so on they also do a lot of good stuff in the community this is also part of being an ultra you're not only there for your team you're also there for the city and Fiorentina also showing the best there. Frosinone got a win over Empoli and Torino beat Sassuolo, also having a relatively good streak. So currently in the table, yeah, Inter expectedly top and Juve just two points behind. Juve, as I say it again, the most boring side ever, but they keep it up and you know, only one game a week. Maybe Juventus can stay up there. I'm not saying Milan and Napoli are quite out of it yet, but they really need to get uh, their season going. And especially, if, uh, you know, I see Milan most doesn't look all that, uh, that great. Atalanta and Bologna probably outside shots. I don't think that Roma and now Fiorentina with three losses are in the last. La I mean, it's relatively broad here. On the bottom, we see Caleri and Auda out of it with two wins and three draws. Elas, Empoli and Salernitana at the moment in there. So all the promoted teams uh, staying in, um, staying at the moment in, in, in the league. But, you know, let's look also at the expected standings. And we see Caleri, Empoli, Sal Salernitana. I mean, Empoli, we have said for a long time, Salernitana also looked to be a pretty atrocious team at this very moment. Despite people in Zagi, I think he's, take, he's taking over, which, which is also interesting. Up top, Juve are now in second place, but uh, with... It's still very much Inter. Napoli now ahead of Milan because after that, that loss, what you would you expect? We also had Roma, uh, Fiorentina just outside the top six. Lazio still in, in, in Inter, which is a little, little bit surprising. But I, I actually want to see Bologna. Bologna might do something. This upcoming weekend, it's one game and one game only that you want to watch. And probably it's not a good one, but you know, it's all the emotions. Lazio, Roma. 
It's the big one. Uh, I think also Fiorentina, Bologna, uh, you know, that's an Apennine. They're the, the Derby on both sides of the Apennine. They're only one hour apart, so that's an interesting one. I don't know why they play Inter against Frozen only late. Uh, Milan have to go to Lecce. Uh, another uh, horrific game I see coming. And don't you dare watching Juve against Cagliari. And now Cagliari are going to turn it around. There. In any case, that was it from me with making up a little bit on Serie, on Serie A. What, what do you think? Can Juve push Inter? Can they? It would be interesting to see. In any case, give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.